Jerry Berger, not to be confused with Hamburger, tried to replicate the infamous Milgram study in 2009. However, there was one major difference. It was ethical. The problem with Milgram study was that the shocks went all the way up to 450 volts, distressing participants. In Milgram's variation number 5, Berger points out that those who did rebel against authority dropped out by 150 volts, and the participants who were still obedient after 150 volts all went on to the end. Berger therefore argues that this is the point of no return, and there is no need to continue the experiment after this point. This study had many aims, the first being to find out if the same results found in Milgram's study would reoccur when replicated with modern participants in 2009. He also wanted to see whether personality variables such as empathy and locus of control can influence obedience. The final aim was to see if the presence of a disobedient model would make a difference to obedience levels. Berger's participants were a volunteer sample recruited through newspaper adverts and were paid $50 before the study started. They underwent a screening procedure which volunteers who had anxiety issues, drug dependency, heard of Milgram's experiments or studied psychology before were all dropped out. The final sample consisted of 70 participants, both men and women, aged 20 to 81. The procedure was essentially a replication of Milgram's 1963 baseline study. The experimenter was a white man in his 30s, dressed in a white lab coat whilst a confederate learner was in his 50s. Instead of the participants receiving the painful 45 volt shock like in the original experiment, they were only given a mere 15 volt shock. The participants, who were now teachers due to the rigged hat draw, watched the learner being strapped into an electric chair and then sat at the shock generator in an adjacent room. It was at this point that the learner indicated they had a slight heart condition, however the experimenter assured them that the shocks would not be harmful. The teacher had to read out 25 multiple choice questions whilst the learner would indicate their response using a buzzer. If the learner got the answer wrong, the teacher would have to administer an electrical shock, starting at 15 volts and going up in 15 volt intervals. After 75 volts, the learner started making sounds of pain. At 150 volts, the learner cried out in pain and exclaimed that they wanted to stop due to their heart condition. If the teacher moved to deliver the 165 volt shock, the experimenter stopped the experiment. In the model refusal condition, the second confederate pretended to be another teacher. This teacher would deliver the shocks with the participant teacher watching. After 90 volts, the confederate expresses his concern and refuses to continue. The experimenter then tells the participant to take over delivering the shocks. Berger made sure that he used ethical controls to improve on Milgram's original experiment. There was a two-step screening process which filtered out anyone who might be distressed by the experiments. Participants were warned three times in writing that they could withdraw at any point and still keep the $50. The experimenter was actually a clinical psychologist who was skilled in spotting signs of distress. As mentioned, the test shock was only 15 volts but not 45 volts. Berger also made sure that within a few seconds of the study's end, the learner entered the room to reassure the participant that he was fine. Berger found that 70% of participants in the baseline condition were prepared to go past 150 volts, a close result to Milgram's 65%. Berger also compared men and women, but was unable to find any difference in obedience. Women were slightly less likely to obey in the modelled refusal condition, but this was not statistically significant. Empathy made no significant difference to obedience. However, in the baseline condition, those who stopped before 150 volts did have a slightly higher locus of control. This was not the case in the modelled refusal condition. An interesting point to mention is that the modelled refusal results were not very different from the baseline condition. This goes against social impact theory, which suggests that the impact of the authority figure would be lessened if divided between the two teachers rather than focused on just one. Berger made a few conclusions from these results. 
empathy didn't make a difference to obedience, which goes against what Milgram thought and what Berger expected. The locus of control, however, did make a small difference, suggesting that some people could resist the agentic shift. Finally, arguably the most important conclusion was that the experiment suggests that Milgram's results are historically valid. After almost half a century, people are still influenced by situational factors to obey an authority figure, even if it goes against their moral values.